Modulate This. Hi, this is Mark Moja with Modulate This, and I had a recent phone conversation with Dr. Ge Wang, who's the CTO and co-founder of Smule, the makers of Ocarina and Sonic Glider and other iPhone applications. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Ocarina, Ocarina is the first musical instrument on the iPhone. It was released in November. It was the number one app on the App Store. And in the month of November, Ocarina was downloaded over 400,000 times. In addition to his work at Smule, Dr. Wang is also an assistant professor at Stanford at the Center for Computer Research in Music and Acoustics. He's also the founding director of the Stanford Laptop Orchestra. I've broken this interview into two parts. In part one, Dr. Wang talks about the iPhone as an app platform, how constraint drives innovation, and his vision of using technology to bring people closer together. In part two of the interview, we focus more on the Ocarina and what's next for the Ocarina and what's next for Smule. For more information on this and other interviews by Modulate This, visit www.modulatethis.com slash interviews. Were you searching for a platform to do interactive Sonic applications on, or did the iPhone itself inspire you to go in this direction and build applications for the iPhone? I think it was definitely more of the latter. It was more actually having the iPhone just kind of materialize almost as far as we were concerned. And um, and observing this platform and seeing that it's actually a kind of a unique intersection of technologies that haven't really, you know, all the technologies I think were present, but they weren't really in one place as they are now with the iPhone. And this technology being, yes, yeah, she has a, a fairly powerful computational device um, in the iPhone. And as well as you have multi-touch, um, of course, you have audio input and output using the phone, um, you have accelerometer control, and you have a powerful graphics processing unit on the phone itself. Um, and you combine that with the fact that iPhones actually are have data plans and are and people using likely to be connected almost 24 hours a day. And on top of it, this is actually mobile. So it's something you can carry with you, put in your pocket, and take it out while you wait in line to get milk at the grocery store and use for a few minutes. It's, so it's all of those factors together that suddenly, you know, I think we made, made a lot of things possible for us that I think maybe we didn't know it, but I think we were waiting for it. While the iPhone is powerful, it's also constrained, you know, the one-button interface with multi-touch and... In design, how do you think constraints like that create innovation? Um, well, I think sometimes, as, as you know, uh, constraints actually drive innovation. It actually forces you to think in different degree, different angles and have different perspectives on this. Um, for us, yeah, the uh, one button, actual one tactile button on the phone is is constraint, and other constraints are just actually being you know not that powerful of a computer if you compare it to say a laptop. Um, the GPU, everything on board is just, just not quite as powerful as it being a much smaller device. Memory, um, clock speed, uh, graphics processing unit, but also when we get down to also the latency for the system is also it, it's more significant. It's, it's 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 longer than we would definitely be used to on what is what's achievable on the laptop. So all of those, I think, definitely shapes or help shapes the type of things that we, we design. Um, and we certainly try to take those factors into account when, when we do design um, and things for the iPhone. Just changing gears a little bit, I've been doing electronic music for a long time, and, and I think that now that everything has gone, laptop and home studio, it's gone from you know making music, it was a bit tribal as you're playing with bands, and then I think electronic music in some ways it made you know made it a bit um, mm-hmm. we're That's making music right. in isolation more and more yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, one of the things I'm impressed about with Ocarina and all of your applications is the use of social and the features on the phone to connect people I'm sure people email you all the time with stories about maybe how your apps have connected them to somebody else uh, do you have anything that comes to mind um, yes 
Yes, um, I think actually your use of the word tribal like resonates really strongly with, with us, Ms. Mule. And I think that's really, even with new technology, I think we're doing, we're really trying to do exactly that, is to actually make, make this more tribal, to make this actually a physical device. If you look at, you know, our applications, um, pressure the lighter and ocarina, it's, it's actually, it, it's really, it's not saying that, you know, it's a simulation of the ocarina running on the iPhone. The idea is that your iPhone is the ocarina. Um, and, you know, it makes a sound. It is kind of, the form factor is the ocarina, and yet physically blow into it. Um, you mentioned, you know, that how music making perhaps with laptops has gone, you know, in some ways more isolated and, and more, and, and perhaps less tribal. And using the laptop works for kind of just as a brief example, it, it's even though like a ton of laptops and a ton, ton of technology, I think what the laptop works for is intending to do is to really combine technology with more traditional music making. In fact, it's something we call electronic chamber music. And it's actually meant to bring people together to perform in one place with technology and to also invite listeners to actually treat the ensemble as, as just that, as an ensemble that has kind of a very intimate sound that it's actually projecting for the audience. Um, so in that respect, you know, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, it, it is, a, which mention is, a, which articulated, I think is a really, it's a really great, it's a really important concern. I think we have as, as people and musician moving forward is, is, is just this idea is that, you know, how can we use technology to, to bring us closer? Um, as people, rather than to actually, you know, further isolate us. If 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 I, if I may extrapolate even a little bit more, it's uh, I, I don't know if you've re read any of the Az Isaac Asimov novels. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, for example, in instance, the I think it's in some of the series there were these 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 people called the Spacers. Um, they essentially lived on. They're essentially descendants of humans. But they, they've come to basically have no human contact whatsoever, and they choose to live as far away from each other as possible. And they do all their communications via viewing, which is some form of, I guess, <laughs> futuristic video I am is what I'm, I'm seeing it. And it's kind of an extreme. And it, it, it's, it's, you know, I think there's actually a real danger of technology actually doing that <laughs> to, to humans. Um, and especially more immediately, I think, to, to people making music with computers.